very happy to be with you today. Um, for some 20 years, I have been speaking in different cities in Europe. Uh, actually, the very first time I visit, visited Szeged, I think, was um, 19, 1985, 84 or different. Definitely more than 10 years ago. So it's always a great pleasure to come here again. Let's see old faces and new faces. So I'm a disciple of the founder Acharya of the Hare Krishna movement. I received my initiation, Harinam Diksha, in uh, 1971. And so to his disciples, Srila Prabhupada has transferred his mission, which he received from his spiritual master. And that is to help to realize a prophecy that was made 500 years ago by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this Hare Krishna movement, as you see it, is not really a brand new phenomenon with headquarters in New York or Hollywood or some place like that. <laughs> but actually, it is a very old and traditional spiritual movement which, which begins in this form. Actually, we can say it goes back thousands, even millions of years, but at least in this identifiable form, it can be traced to Bengal 500 years ago. And uh, the beginning is the golden avatar. Avatar means incarnation of God. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Oh yes, we have his picture right there. So, the personality in the middle with the golden cloth, that is Lord Chaitanya. And he began, as I said, the Krishna consciousness movement in this form as you see it, with the chanting, uh, going everywhere, Sankirtan it's called, glorifying the holy name of Krishna. Uh, in song with musical instruments. Which we have today. We have here Mardanga. And cartels. So this this style of chanting Hare Krishna, especially for the whole world, uh, has been introduced by Lord Chaitanya. And at that time, 500 years ago, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made a prediction. In the Bengali language, which means that there will come a day when in every town, in every village, Prithivi, on the face of the earth, not just in India, but everywhere in the world, the 
chanting of my name, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Krishna, will be heard. Aztán jó tettet tette, ezt a Bengáljuk hallhattátok, hogy, uh, hogy 500 év volt ez a jóslat, hogy az egész világon énekelni fogják az ő, vagy Krishna-nak a szent nevét, nem csak egy bizonyos részén a földbújdóna. So here we are in Seged, which is one town in the world. And our purpose is to forward, bring forward this um, prophecy, this prediction. So, what we're going to do now is demonstrate this process that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has introduced, Kirtan. Amit most tenni fogunk, hogy bemutatjuk ezt a, ezt a mozgalmat, amit Csétel Mahaprabhu uh, alapított, Kirtannal. The word Kirtan simply means to glorify. A Kirtan egyszerűen azt jelenti, hogy dicsőíteni. But we are glorifying the names of Krishna. De mi a Krishna-nak a nevei dicsőítjük. The Hare Krishna Mahamantra. A Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And then after some minutes of doing that, showing you what Kirtan is about, Then I'm going to explain this transcendental sound vibration. This is the subject matter of the talk, mantra. So I thank you. We will start the kirtan now. <coughs> Vishnu Balayo Krishna Pristaya Murtale Srimad Devakti Oh, 
taken as sentimental, some form of musical entertainment. Actually, Krishna says that kirtan, constant, satatam kirtayantumam, constant glorification of himself is the sign, the mark of a mahatma, a great soul, one who is in the transcendental position. And Krishna says, from this process of glorifying him, Tushanticha, Ramanticha, one becomes satisfied and in fact one attains transcendental happiness. And furthermore, Krishna says, that this process of glorifying him should be done according to the method of love, priti purvakam. That means that this process of bhakti yoga, yoga of devotion, must not be dry. Now there are other systems of yoga, no doubt. 
más joga rendszerben lehet, hogy ez nincs. But what separates bhakti yoga from other systems of yoga is that bhakti yoga uh, very importantly inputs the emotions. De amiben különbözik a bhakti yoga más joga folyamatoktól, hogy a bhakti yoga nagyon erősen előre, előre teszi az érzelmeket. érzelmeket. This is essential. Ez fontos, lényeges. I might speak a little strongly and say the yoga, other yoga systems, you know, when you read about them, uh, it's even said in the books about them that yes, bhakti yoga is for people who are more emotional, but hatha yoga or raja yoga, etc., are for those who are more intellectual. Beszéltek kicsit erősen is akár, ezek a joga könyvekben, mert az ő folyamataik vannak leírva, úgy magyarázták el, hogy hát igen, a bhakti joga azoknak van, akik kicsit ilyen érzelgősebben, és a hatha joga és a többi pedig azoknak, akik ilyen intellektuálisak. But this sort of distinction does not speak well for the writer's understanding of human nature. De ez a fajta írás, ez nem áll ki az emberi természet megért, helyes megértése mellett. Because the human being is predominantly an emotional being. Mert az emberi lény az főleg érzelmi lény. This idea of someone being situated on some cool objective rationalism is a myth. Ez a, ez a fajta felfogás, hogy valaki egy fajta hideg, ilyen közömbös racionalizmusban van, ez csak egy mítosz. When you examine the lives of the so-called cool objective rationalists, you find how they formulated their ideas very much under the sway of emotions. Uh, amikor tanulmányozunk az ilyen hideg racionalistáknak a Életét, akkor látjuk, hogy még őket is elvitték az érzelmek. So emotions are very much influential in all of our lives. Az érzelmek nagyon befolyásolnak minket az egész életünk során. So when we take to spiritual life, it is foolish to simply try to chop them off. No, leave the emotions behind and just, you know, use the brain, the intellect. Mivel, hogy ezek az érzelmek mindig befolyásolják az életünket, ez nem logikus csak, amikor bejövünk a lelkiletbe, akkor ezeket így lecsapni, és csak az intellektusunkat vinni tovább. What all that does is create the typical duality that many people suffer from when they try to make spiritual advancement. Amit ez okoz, az a tipikus kettősség, amit azok az emberek, akik lelkiletet gyakorolnak, ettől szenvednek. They have their so pure idealistic conception of spirituality. Van a tiszta idealisztikus felfogásuk a lelkiségről. But then they have all these emotions and they don't really don't know what to do with. De még vannak ezek az érzelmeik is, amiről, amiben nem is tudják, hogy mit kezdjenek most. And uh, because they have no way of purifying the emotions, then those emotions give them great difficulty in their attempt to make spiritual progress. És mivel nincs egy folyamatuk rá, hogy hogyan tisztítsák meg ezeket az érzelmeket, ezért a lelki lelki felelősségben ez nagy akadályt fog jelenteni. So bhakti yoga is actually the perfect yoga system because it says, yes, bring your emotions, bring them. We're not afraid of emotions in bhakti yoga. A bhakti yoga valójában a tökéletes yoga rendszer, ami azt mondjuk, hogy igen, hozzad az érzelmeidet, hozzad csak, mi nem félünk ezektől. Bring your mind and bring your intellect also. They're necessary. Hozzad el az elmédet és az intellektusodat is, ezek szükségesek. But in Gita, Krishna says, by Priti Purvaka, by the method of love, then the Dhami Buddhi Yogam Tam, then you'll attain Buddhi Yoga, Yoga of the intellect, in connection with me. De a Bhagavad Gita-ban Krishna azt mondja, hogy ezzel a Bhakti Yoga folyamatával eljutunk a Buddhi Yogához, a vele való kapcsolathoz. And by bringing in the emotions, focusing the emotions on me, and I will respond. I will bestow my mercy upon such a devotee. I will destroy the agyan, the ignorance in his heart. You see, this is another vanity if someone thinks that I myself can destroy my own ignorance. Ez egy fajta, ez egy másik fajta büszkeség, hogyha valaki azt mondja, hogy én el tudom pusztítani a saját tudatlanságomat. You see, ignorance is, is a, it's a bondage. A tudatlanság az egy kötelék. You see, it's like if you have your hands tied behind your back. Ez olyan, mint amikor hátra kötözik a kezedet. So how do you untie your hands? Hogy fogod kikötni? Yourself. 
Te magad. You need someone's help. Valakinek a segítségére van szüksége. So this Krishna is promising. Ez Krishna megígéri. Ten chapter of Gita verse 11. Then I will destroy the darkness and ignorance in your heart. I will be the Jnana Deepa, the torchlight of knowledge in your heart. But you should worship me pretty poorly with the method of love. So, all of that, you see, is inherent in this process of kirtan. Because we are chanting mantra, which I'm going to explain now, but let's just say the pure spiritual sound revealed in the Vedas. But we are chanting also uh, with music. With a rhythmic beat, with melody, with song. Now music, everyone knows that it stimulates emotions. This is why people like music. People especially like love songs. They are always very popular on the radio. So a message of love and music, it just seems to go together perfectly. So again, this is human nature. So Bhakti Yoga expertly engages that nature. In mantra meditation. Mantra meditációban. By using music, specific melodies, which stimulate spiritual emotions. Specific instruments, which create uh, an atmosphere of spirituality. And the whole package together brings forth our Preeti, our love from deep within the heart, love for Krishna, love for God. Mm. So now I want to move on to speak specifically about mantra. You see, this is what we're doing. It is mantra yoga. Yoga means to connect with God and mantra means again spiritual sound so by spiritual sound we are connecting with God so now let us consider the power of sound first of all I'm just going to talk about uh, shabda in Sanskrit we can say laukika shabda, ordinary sound. It has mysterious powers which are baffling to the greatest brains of the world. See, our problem is we tend to be very practical about things. We tend to look at the world in terms of our needs, what we want to get from it. But the everyday wonder, the everyday miracle that is going on around us, we miss. You see, so one of the miracles is the miracle of speech. Now here I am standing up here before you. And certain sounds are emanating from my mouth. Of course, since I'm speaking a different language than you, the sound has to be translated to her. 
Persze másik nyelven beszélek, és így rajta keresztül van a fordítás. But anyway, a sound is coming, a vibration is coming through the air, through the atmosphere. De akár, hogy is a hang, a vibráció jön a levegőbe, az atmoszférába. And it is entering your minds through your ears. És ez belép az elmétekbe, flőtöken keresztül. And it is bringing forth knowledge. És ez tudást hoz létre. You're understanding what I'm saying, at least I hope you are. But anyway, whether it's me or anybody, but every day we're talking, we're hearing the radio, we're watching television. Uh, sounds, words are reaching our ears. And somehow this, you know, this frequency of vibrations in the air is causing con uh, knowledge. Understanding to manifest in our awareness. És valamiképpen ez a vibrációnak a frekvenciája a levegőben, ez a tudást okoz egy ilyen megvalósítás bennünk. Now why is that? Miért van ez? How is that? Hogy van ez? So, you may not be acquainted uh, with philosophy. Talán nem annyira vagytok ismertek a filozófiába. I mean the western philosophy. But I can tell you, this is one of the great problems of philosophy. The greatest brains have thought about this until smoke came out of their ears. They have not been able to explain how words, spoken sound, can incite knowledge, awareness, understanding. Nem képesek megérteni, ez az egyszerű dolog, mint a hang, hogyan képezhet az elmében megértés, tudatosságot. And uh, similarly, uh, writing, writing is a visual form of speech. És ugyanígy az írás, az írás az egy látható, uh, uh, látható módja a beszédnek. So you have on a, a piece of paper and some squiggles on this paper, and you look at it, and you get knowledge. Csak ránéz egy papírra, és akkor ott vannak ilyen kaparások, és akkor kapsz belőle tudást. How does that work? Hogyan működik ez? Actually, nobody knows. Igazából senki sem tudja. Yeah, every day, we just, you know, blah, 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 blah. Reading things, talking, transferring knowledge, information, facts. Minden nap csak beszélünk, és olvasunk ilyen információkat, tényeket adunk át. And we take it quite for granted. És ezt nagyon könnyedén veszük. When actually it is miraculous. Pedig valójában ez csodálatra méltó. So, also sound. Sound has other powers. És a, a hangnak más hatalma is van. We already mentioned the power of music to bring out emotions. Már említettük azt a hatalmát, hogy a zene képes érzelmeket kihozni. Mm -hmm. And another example is if an airplane, a jet, flies overhead very fast, faster than the speed of sound. It will create what is called a sonic boom, a sonic wave. Which can smash all the windows and shake it. Just by sound. When soldiers are marching, and if they cross a bridge, especially a stone bridge, and when they're marching on the road, they all march at the same time, you see, taking steps at the same time. But when they cross the stone bridge, they have to break up their steps. It has to be out of order, because if they all march together, the impact of that vibration can break the stone bridge. És amikor a katonák menetelnek, és így egyszer lépnek, hogyha egy ilyen hídhoz érnek, különösen egy fa hídhoz, akkor már nem léphetnek tovább egyszerre, mert ez az egyszerre lévő ütem, ez el tudja törni ezt a hidat. And finally, we come to the scriptures of the world. És végül eljutunk a világírásaihoz. For instance, in your own Holy Bible, the first book, Genesis. Például a ti Szent Bibliátok az első könyv Jézusé. We see that God 
said, let there be light, and there was light. Ott olvashatjuk, hogy Isten mondta, hogy legyen világosság, és fönn világosság. And in the uh, book of John in the New Testament, és János könyve az új testamentumban, it is said that in the beginning there was the word, logos, in the Greek language. Ez azt mondja, hogy először volt az igen, logos, görög, görögül. And this word is the origin of the world. És ez az ige, ez a világ eredete. Yes. So, now we're coming to the spiritual dimension of sound. És most már eljutunk a hang lelki dimenziójába. Now, I want to, before going into that, I want to a little bit talk about how modern science has been They they have actually come up to the threshold, to the doorway of spiritual sound. They haven't been able to go in, but they have actually come to the door. You may have heard, I'm sure everyone here has heard, about uh, the branch of physics called quantum mechanics. Bizonyára hallottatok a fizikának az egyik ágáról, a quantum mechanikáról. Actually some of the foremost leaders of that field have come from your country. Igazából a vezetője, a fővezetője ennek a területnek a ti országotokból jöttek legtöbben. Many of them went to America and built the atom bomb. Sokan közül elmentek Amerikába és felépítették az atombombát. Thank you, Hungary. <laughs> oh, anyway. But in quantum mechanics, um, there is this idea of what they call wave particle. This is in what they call the micro world, a world even smaller than the atom. So we're talking about subatomic particles like electrons and photons. So in one sense they are particles. But in another sense they are waves. Just as sound is a wave, vibration is a wave. Mint ahogyan a, a hang is egy vibráció, egy ilyen a hullám. Now, the way in which they're waves is very interesting. Most az a hullám, amin ezek vannak, ez nagyon érdekes. They are waves in terms of mathematical calculation. Egy a matematikai szám, számítás szerint vibrálnak. You see, physically, they are particles. But when scientists try to understand uh, the movement of these waves, then they have to calculate uh, the movement of these particles, and they have to calculate in terms of what they call probability waves. Now, what this means, I want this is of course very complex information, and I'm trying to make it very simple. But what this means actually is that these uh, elements or these um, these elemental particles like photons and electrons they have an aspect which is physical but they also have an aspect which is mental. Hát mit jelent ez valójában ez nagyon bonyolult de próbálom egyszer nem magyar ez mint ezeknek a részecskéknek van egy működése ami fizikai és van egy működése ami elmei. Because if the wave aspect is mathematical probability, then you see that's a that's a conception of the mind. Mm -hmm. So scientists also are amazed how, by the application of their their mathematics, they're able to understand the foundations of the material world. A tudások, tudósok is csodálkoznak megérteni, az ő matematikai elképzelésük hogyan képes megérteni az anyag világ alapjait. This suggests to some of the more open-minded scientists 
that the foundations of the world are intelligent, not chaotic. És ez arra késztet néhány uh, ilyen tudost, hogy feltételezze, hogy a világnak az eredete az nem káosz, hanem intelligencia. Mm. This suggests to some scientists that what is going on is a kind of meeting of minds. Arra késztet néhány tudost, hogy ami megy valójában, az az elmék találkozása. That the scientist mind is meeting a cosmic mind és a tudósok elméje összetelkezik egy kozmikus elmével. So this agrees very well with the Vedic explanation ez of nagy, this material world. Ez nagyon is egyetért a, a tanígi világ a védikus elmagyarázásával. In fact, some scientists are saying, because you know, uh, there is a model of reality which comes from Sir Isaac Newton. And many people still think of the world in this way. So he compared the universe to a clock. See, this is what goes on. <laughs> that according to the technology of the time, scientists, they derive their analogies. A, a tudósok különféle elméleteket állítanak fel. So at the time of Sir Isaac Newton, the clock, that was a rather new invention, the mechanical clock. A, a Newton idejében egy mechanikus óra az egy új feltalálás volt. Now of course the invention that is, everyone talks about is the computer. És most az a, az a találmány, amiről mindenki beszél, az a kompjúter. And now you see scientists compare the world to computer and all of that. És most meg a tudósok kompjúterhez hasonlítják a világot, és ilyesmikhez. But Newton, in his day, he compared the world to a clock. De Newton az ő idejében egy órához hasonlította a világot. Mm -hmm. So that means the world is a machine. Ez azt jelenti, hogy a világ az egy évezet. And everything works according to mechanistics. És minden mechanikusan működik. You see? So this idea is still with us. Még mindig velünk van ez a gondolat. When you take a science class, if you're, if you're not really that interested in science but you have to take some science class to to get your high school degree and that's generally the level of science they teach you and so many people they have this idea in their mind that the world is like a machine but in fact the more advanced scientists in fields like quantum mechanics and so on. <coughs> Many of them have come to the conclusion that the world is not like a machine, but like a mind. Mm. So then they get interested in ancient philosophy. Even in the West, there were philosophers like Plato, who said that the ultimate reality is ideas. And what we're experiencing now is a kind of gross reflection of original pure ideas. És amit mi most tapasztalunk, az egy durva visszatükröződése az eredeti tiszta elképzelésnek. So, um, some modern science in the, uh, scientists in the field of mind consciousness studies, quantum mechanics. Néhány modern tudós, aki az elmeműködését és a quantum mechanikát tanulmányozza. They declare themselves to be platonists. Ők egy platonistáknak vallják magukat. One is the British rather well-known British scientist named Sir Roger Penrose. He's written a book, I think, called The Mathematics of the Mind, something like that. So he, he uh, his, you could say, his guru is the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. So, this old idea that reality, the reality of this 
that we're experiencing is ultimately to be found in the realm of mind or ideas is very much a Vedic conception. És az a régi ötlet, hogy ennek az eredete, amit mi mindig mindent találunk itt a világban, az elméből számozik, az már nem egy új felfogás, és a egyetért a védikus felfogásra. The Vedic scriptures speak of Mahatatva. A védikus írások a Mahatatváról beszélnek. Which can be translated as the great truth. Amit úgy lehet folytani, mint nagy igazság. So the Mahatatva is the archetype of everything in the cosmos. A Mahatatva az arévetikusa az egy a kozmosban mindennek. And the Mahatatva is indeed uh, a uh, the nature of it is consciousness. És a Mahatatva az valóban ennek a ennek a tudatnak a tudatnak a természete. And within that you can say idea that conception of uh, the universe és az univerzumnak ebben a felfogásában is every ingredient that is required to create this physical world minden hozzávaló ott van ami szükséges megteremteni ezt az anyagi világot this physical world evolves out of the mahatatva és ez a fizikai világ előjön a mahatatvából So behind this Mahatattva is a level of pure sound. I was speaking to you before about sound as we experience it now. And how that is also very wonderful. És hogy ez is nagyon It baffles the brains of the big philosophers. Hogy ez még nagy filozófusoknak az elméjét is még megütközteti. But the Vedas go on to tell us that there are higher levels of shabda or sound. De a védek tovább mennek és mondják, hogy még magasabb szintje is vannak a shabdának vagy hangnak. Than just this which we are using now. Mint csak ez, amit most használunk. So, our thoughts are also sound. <laughs> A mi gondolataink is hangok. But then even above that, there is the archetypical ideas, this Mahatattva. De még a felett vannak ezek az elsődleges ötletek, ez a Mahatattva. So when we think, you see, when we think with our little relative human mind, amikor mi gondolkodunk, ami kis relatív emberi elménkkel, we are trying to reach up to the storehouse of ideas. This is what philosophy is all about. They try to find ideas up there which will explain everything in this world. So those ideas up there, they exist on a different level of vibration, a different level of sound. Azok a gondok, gondolatok ott fent egy különböző vibrációval, különböző hangban léteznek. Which is called Pashanti Vak. Amit Pashanti Vaknak neveznek. But then there is a level of sound even farther above de, that. De még van a felett is egy uh, hang. And that is called Paravak. És ez Paravak. And uh, this Paravak is the Vedic sound. Ez a Paravak a védikus hang. The sound by which the whole material existence has taken shape. As a hang, when I enter, as I as I as I am transformed. And by which it is being maintained. Is when we are fed and tortured. And also by which it will be destroyed. Is when we are just as pushed in. Some long point in the future. A giant table point here, but a new one. Yes. So out of this parava. Which, if you want to know what is Paravak, then I see most of you are acquainted with Krishna consciousness. Then you have to remember Mahavishnu. Ez a Paravak, hogy a látom a legjobban úgy ismerted a Krishna történetet, tehát hogy tudjátok, akarjátok tudni, hogy mi ez akkor Mahavishnu a kelemlékezete. That he is breathing out the universes from the pores of his body. And you know when you breathe, there's a sound. So when he breathes, 
There is a sound, but that is the sound of the Vedas. And that potent Vedic sound, then again, as I said, that is causing the material elements, which are the, in themselves chaotic, but it is causing them to have form, to take shape. És ez az erőteljes védikus hang, ami kiárad, ez arra készíteti az anyagi elemeket, amik káoszban vannak, hogy formát töltsenek. And this is what scientists are amazed about now. És ez az, ami csodálkoznak a tudósok manapság. They can understand that there seems to be some mathematically plottable wave or vibration which gives order to the movements of the fundamental particles of matter. Hogy úgy tűnik, mint hogyha egy matematikailag szabályos hulláma uh, lenne ezeknek a részeskéknek, ami magyarázatot ad ezeknek a működésére. Um, voila, therefore our world has form. És hát így, így lett a világunk így, így öltött formát. Mm. Somehow out of this fundamental vibration. Valahogy ebből a vibrációból. Yeah, so, as I said, this is all been revealed in the Vedic scriptures. Has been known and discussed by the Vedic sages for thousands and thousands of years.